welcome back to Love Shack, guys. Today, we're going to be doing a deck profile video for you. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, I've been working on this for a while and just trying to get everything sort of in order with something I was happy with. Before we jump into the deck profile, though, I do just want to go ahead and announce the winner of the second giveaway. Um, so the first giveaway was Antonio Lacia. Um, he won a couple of Super Airs. That was for probably a couple weeks ago now at the time I'm filming this. Second giveaway went on for a little while. Uh, we added a lot of cards to the pot over our Rise of the Duelist series opening. Um, and as of, well, the last opening that we did, which was the Rise of the Duelist box opening where I got the Triple Tactics Talent, um, we did have that giveaway go live. So the winner of that one, and I'm going to put the, the comment up on here, is Pietro Zekin LT. If I mispronounced that, I'm sorry. Um, Pietro, you're going to win everything here. Um, ship to you free of charge. I will leave a comment on the video as well so that you know how to get in touch with me. Um, I'll need you to send an email to loveshackgaming at hotmail.com, which is our business address. With your mailing info so we can get that sent out. You'll win everything here. Now, unfortunately, I did make a mistake and I misplaced two of the super rare trap tricks. Um, so as a result of that and my mistake, I have gone ahead and added two additional cards to the pot. So uh, Seliglare, the Luminous Lunar Dragon, is an ultra from Rise of the Duels. That is going to be added to your winnings, as well as this ultra rare Fire Flint Lady, which is a neat card. And I know uh, some people want it for Noble Knights. So um, congratulations again to Pietro. The next giveaway will start with the next opening video that we do, um, which will probably be uh, in a few days. So stay tuned for that if you guys want another chance to win. Who knows if it'll actually be live, but... Congratulations to Pietro. And with that said, let's jump into the deck profile. And before I do start getting into this, I do just want to ask if you guys have not subscribed, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It just takes a second and it really does help. If you want to hit the bell as well, that's great. It'll give you notifications whenever we go live with new videos, which means you'll be notified for giveaways and things of that nature. Let's jump into this. Uh, if you didn't notice by the title or the cards themselves, this is a Sacred Beast deck profile video. And I have to tell you, I've had a ton of fun playing with it. I didn't really want to do anything until I had had a chance to actually play with the deck enough to really know how to talk about it, so that's why we're a little delayed in actually getting this, this video posted, but I'm pretty happy with it overall. There's a few things I'd like to change and some, obviously, uh, you know, alternative choices I'll talk about, uh, primarily cards that are just either too pricey that I just don't have play sets of right now. Um, and I'll let you know kind of how I would go about those. So let's jump into the deck profile itself, um, and we'll go from there. You guys can uh, let me know, obviously, uh, you know, after in the comments what your opinions are on these cards and other things you might do differently uh so we've got three dark summoning beast three dark beckoning beast and three chaos summoning beast so this is all pretty straightforward stuff um i'm just trying to fix the lighting on this guys so bear with me a moment here that's much better okay so this is all pretty straightforward um Basically, your playmakers, this is your searcher, this is what gets stuff from hand and searches your field spell, and this is what pulls a sacred beast directly out of the deck. Um, because I'm playing Desires in this deck, you really do have to maximize all of these cards at three. Um, realistically, though, once you get your combo set up, hopefully you won't have to worry about them too much later into the game. So three of each of these, they're all, like I said, they're all pretty straightforward. Um, I got the Foil Dark Summoning Beast finally. Don't have the Fallen Paradises yet, but I am working uh, slowly but surely to try and... Uh, and bling this out. Although the ulti sacred beasts are going to be a little bit tougher. <laughs> so those are the, the nine cards um, that are just relatively straightforward. I'm also going to do some combos. So I'll show you guys, you know, just a few test hands and stuff um, a little bit later in the video as we get going. So we got two Raviel, Lord of Phantasms. And then we've got two Haman. I am not playing Uriah in this build. Um, there are definitely some builds where you can play Verte and Akonda and utilize that with like Dimension Fusion Destruction and, and play the one Uriah. I just think it bricks uh, a lot. I mean, the, these cards brick already, um, but I think it bricks a bit too much to really be worth that extra space. So that is why I have elected not um, to play it right now. And then I'm playing the one Raviel Lord of Phantasms Shimmering Scraper. Now this pretty much, I re very rarely summon this. Um, but it has a couple of neat uses. So for one, it's essentially a hand trap. You can discard, target a Raviel you control. It gains 4,000 attack, and it can attack all monsters your opponent controls once each. So if you do manage to, or are forced to, I guess, go second, you can put some pressure out. Um, and if he's in your grave, you can tribute a monster to add him to your hand. So that's not like a frequent combo, but it does. I mean, if you have a Raviel token, if you have an extra monster on the board that you just aren't using for whatever reason which doesn't happen often um you can recur him back to the hand and, and use him again so that's the lineup there 
And I understand with desires, some people are going to point out, you know, that this as a one of is, is not going to be all that practical. Uh, it's a fair point. It's just ultimately I had to make some of the best choices that I could um, with what I was looking to accomplish. And then triple effect Valor. I just think it's the best hand trap right now that's not in perm. Um, and it's just neat enough in its uses that it, it works really well here. I don't have extra impermanences like for this deck. And so I decided that because they really are kind of interchangeable, um, that Valor would be fine. Ideally, with this deck, you are going first, so, you know, going first, Valor's going to be the better option to have either way, um, in my opinion, of course. On to the spells, triple opening of the Spirit Gates. That is the tanky um, of the deck. It can search out any of your Sacred Beast monsters or monsters that list the Sacred Beasts in their text. Double Fall in Paradise, so, yep, a two of. Ideally, though, you're going to search this out before you desires and try to get into your Floodgates, so it's, it's okay um, at that number. Uh, Chaos Summoning Beast can grab it directly, and you don't really care too much about a second copy. So if it does get banished, that's fine. Um, two, Called by the Grave. Just, again, like a really important card, and probably one of the ones I'd bump to three if I was going to start making some immediate changes, um, just because of the Desire's nature of the deck. But I'm okay with it at two. It's just, it's, it's really essential that you don't get Ash Blossomed in order to be able to resolve your combo going first. Because if you get Ash, like, unless you open a one-for-one one or an extender, you're really going to be at a tough spot trying to get your combo set up. And if you can't get a combo set up, you pretty much lose. Um, triple Desires, I, I don't love the Banish, but the draw is really good. And obviously, if you hit a good Desires, you can clear a lot of bricks out of your deck. So it has a multi-use there. Um, if you do force your, you know, you end up being forced to go later into games. To alert, this is pretty standard among these decks. Um, you know, there's just not enough dark monsters that I want to banish them all the time. So having three, it actually dead draws more than you'd think. Two, I'm, I'm okay with. And then a couple of other, a uh, couple of other spell sets here. Two Skyfire, two deck lockdown. You could realistically go like three and one or three and one. I don't like that. I think two and two is fine. Um, deck Lockdown is a really powerful card if you can set it up, but if you don't, it's not the end of the world. Um, and Skyfire overall is just really essential to the combo, but it's again searchable um, and you do have ways to sort of dig in to try to get it. So I'm happy with that ratio. And then the one ofs, obviously the deck does play some one ofs. Um, Foolish Burial is just this basically a searcher um, for either your field spell or for a Sacred Beast monster. You just send one of those to Grave. One for one. I mean, if you open one for one and, like, say, Dark Summoning Beast, and we'll showcase a few combos, it's insanely good um, and basically just makes it easier to play through in a gate. Um, one up start just to draw into the deck. It is the 40th card. And then the one Cosmic Cyclone. Um, it's kind of a random choice, I'll admit, and, and I lean towards, we'll talk about it a bit in the alternative, you know, options, Forbidden Droplets just being outright better, and I think I'd probably trim some space down if I had it, um, but right now I don't, so I'm working kind of within the confines of what I have. I think as just a one-of to out, you know, the occasional problem card, it's at least nice to have access to, but admittedly it was kind of a random um, choice I put in here, and so far it hasn't fucked me. So you may have your own preferences for what you want that 40th card to be. You may not even want to play the upstart. You know, you could take these out and make a deck lockdown and a Cerulean Skyfire and have three of each. That is not a bad move in it by any stretch. And then lastly, for the rest, I've got one Skill Drain, because we're only allowed one, and two Awakening of the Sacred Beasts. Um, again, this card is just nutty. It's a Macro Cosmos and a Skill Drain, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't only negate on field, so it negates, you know, monsters that will banish to activate their effects and what have you. Um, and Skill Drain is just a nutty card. I mean, you have Fallen Paradise out with Skill Drain and the Sacred Beasts, and their untargetable monster effects can't get over them. It's a really tough board to break, unless your opponent, you know, just opens godly. Um... No Sacred Beast pun intended there. So that's the 40-card main deck. Um, I'll jump to the extra deck as well. Now, a lot of people are going to complain because I have two proxies in here, but, like, you can sue me. It's fine. Um, I am working on picking up extra copies of them. I just don't have them at the time of filming. So, yeah, that disclaimer, I'll go ahead and, and edit them in. So for the extra deck, which, by the way, you almost never go into, uh, Link, Karibo, Almirage. These are basically just, like, if you do have that one-for-one -one play, um... You can get your Chaos Summoning Beast off the field after. So there are some scenarios in which you like special in one, but you also open one. Um, but this also works with Dark Beckoning Beast, too. So you summon him, you search what you need, you tribute for a link, and then you can utilize uh, Circle of the uh, Opening of the Spirit Gates, rather, to revive something uh, because you have a Fiending Grave. So they're useful for that. 
Um, I don't go into them much, but it's nice to have those uh, as options. And if they do, like, imperm your monster, um, whether it's Dark Summoning Beast or otherwise, being able to go into this and be like, hey, I'm going to, you know, be able to continue playing or at least try to extend, it's really useful. Um, for the rank twos, I honestly almost never make them. Uh, they're just, they're fine for what they are, uh, I guess, in the rare scenarios. But if I'm being honest with you, I, I never really go into them. Um, and then, so, Nightmare Unicorn is just kind of there. This uh, is the one one of the two proxies. This is Predator Plant Verte Anaconda. Um, I am side decking Super Polys. Um, so, just, he's kind of in there now uh, for the purpose of that, being able to shift him in. One Saryuja, another card you don't make a ton, but it's nice to have access to him if you need him. Um, and then for the fusion, so I'm playing the one Armatile, um, just because I am currently uh, siding, well, like I said, the side deck is sort of a work in progress, which is why it's not going to be featured in this video, but I may do it at a later date and kind of talk about it. But I am siding Dimension Fusion Destruction as well as the one Uriah, because if I side in Super Polys and the other Fusion Heavy stuff, it is a little bit different in terms of the way the deck plays. Um, and just, you know, for continuity's sake. So these are just generic Super Poly targets. Phantasm Emperor, another one, you know, three level tens. It's not impossible to summon, but it's not that useful. Um, and then Rail Cannon, and this is the second proxy, which is the Juggernaut Cannon Leap. Um, just because if you do overlay two of your Sacred Beasts into this, you can burn and then attack for a lot of damage. So the extra deck, I, I can't stress this enough. I almost never go into it except for the Link 1s. So if you guys have different preferences or other things you want to play, by all means, uh, go ahead. I, I kind of threw this together to, like, have an extra deck for the video, but I do not use it all that often. So... We'll go ahead and showcase just a couple of test hands so you guys sort of like how the deck plays and functions. Um, and then we'll actually kind of get that ball rolling. So let me go ahead and get that set up. All right, so like I said, we're gonna do a couple test hands here. Um, just to sort of, we'll do a couple going first and a couple going second, just to sort of give you guys an indication of how I um, prefer to play the deck. Uh, it's definitely a combo heavy deck and it almost functions sort of like one of those protect the castle style decks like Noble Knights um, back in the day or Bujin even where it's like you make your board and then your opponent, you know, if they have an out to it, it's kind of problematic. And if they don't, then you're probably going to win, uh, which is pretty straightforward. But, you know, it other decks can kind of do better um, what this does. So, all right, let's do a couple of test hands there. We'll have an imaginary opponent cut the deck just to continuity's sake i'm definitely excited to like be able to play at some actual locals like in person too well that's just not the best hand all right so i i tried to shuffle as best i could all right so we're gonna start off here like i don't want to desires until i'm able to at least get access to my combo pieces or some of them so we're gonna go dark beckoning beast uh with dark beckoning beast we'll search off our opening of the spirit gates uh, this is, again, I guess we'll, we'll play, you know, assuming the opponent doesn't negate it. Um, and then, I, you know, I'll show you one how you might play through it if they do. Uh, so once you grab that, you're going to activate opening of the spirit gates at that point. Let's just say your opponent bricks pretty hard. They don't, you know, they don't get the outs to it, I guess. Um, dark summoning beast is what I'm going to grab here. Now, you have a couple of options because you can either normal summon again with Dark Beckoning Beast and you can go and put him or you could... I, I personally am not a fan of that approach and I'll show you why. So what I'm going to do is use my additional normal for Chaos Summoning Beast. Uh, with Chaos Summoning Beast, you can obviously tribute him to Special Summon a Sacred Beast. I have one right now. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to link away our Dark Beckoning Beast. We're going to put a Link 1 uh, Salamangrate Almirage out um, up here. And I'm sorry, guys, the angling is not perfect. I, I haven't done a ton of these, like, combo videos before, so you'll have to just bear with me a bit. Um, and I'll try to clean it up as best I can. So you're linking away the Dark Beckoning Beast. You've used your Adornal Summon. Now, because you have a Fiend in Grave, you can activate this. So you discard the Dark Summoning Beast. You have another valid target, so you revive the Summoning Beast himself. It's there. You use his effect next. And again, we're, we're just assuming the opponent doesn't have outs. So he tributes himself. Special summons one of the sacred beasts from the deck, ignoring any summoning conditions. So we're going to special summon Haman. And it is kind of important if you have the Skyfire in hand to special summon Haman first, just for the record. That way you can play the Skyfire and you'll get in a gate. Um, at that point, I mean, obviously your opponents, like unless they're dumb, um, are going to, you know, impermanence you at some point in your combo before you get there. But if they want to do it now, you can negate with Skyfire. I just, I've never seen a scenario where it got that far. Um, and then so you get the Dark Summoning Beast effect in Grave. 
Raviel. After you grab the Raviel, you then have Chaos Summoning Beast live, so you can link uh, tribute him away for that. You get your two Sacred Beasts, but you can do a bit more here. Banish Chaos Summoning Beast, you get your Field Spell, so Fallen Paradise is going to make it untargetable and undestroyable, any of your level 10s. Not to mention, you do have Almirage there, so realistically, he does offer an additional layer of protection, but it's nothing that they don't already have. Um, so you activate the Fallen Paradise um, there, still have two Desires in hand. You got a negate. Fallen Paradise is going to let you draw two, so we're going to take two additional cards here. Uh, deck Lockdown and Called by the Grave. So that's pretty good, although a bit late in the combo for that to be prevalent. Those guys are banished. So next, I'm going to... I mean, you could realistically play the Desires first, and it doesn't really matter because... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you play the Desires first, and then you draw two... Which is, I mean, this is busted, right? So this is sort of what I'm talking about when I say desires, and I understand you, you know, some of the two ups. We probably banished at least a couple of uh, of cards that I only play one of. Maybe we hit the skill drain, we hit an alert, cosmic cyclone. Um, but at that point now, I still have five cards in hand at this point in my combo, and I have a deck lockdown, which is going to shut my opponent out of being able to special from the main deck or add a card. I have the call by the grave to play through negate and awakening with two sacred beasts on the board is going to be both a uh, skill drain as well as uh, you gain life points if your opponent normals or special summons a monster. So this is the board, you know, again, we're assuming they didn't have a negate, but for the purposes of just showing you what the, the combo can do now, you have untar they're untargetable, undestroyable, you've got a negate, your opponent can't search or special from the main deck, you've got a hand trap blocker there, or you know, whatever they might be using, depending on the matchup, you can banish an Eldritch or Grave or something, and then you've got the skill drain there. That is a really tough board to break, and if for some reason they do summon a monster that's going to let you go over it, you've got this guy, you can pop him to Grave, this is 8k, and you're going to, you know, swing over for massive damage. So that's sort of like a prime hand for what the deck can do, but it's so susceptible to the hand traps, which is why it becomes tougher to just sit there and say, yeah, this is a broken deck or whatever. Um, so let's do one more kind of opening combo hand. Let's assume they negate. We're going to play as though the opponent has an Ash Blossom to negate your play. So let's do another. All right. And so just kind of theory crafting, I've been really looking at options. You know, is there a fiend you can play that puts a monster on your opponent's board? Is there a way to block impermanence? But I just, it doesn't seem like there's any effective way to block impermanence and you don't have a lot of excess combo pieces. You know, it's not like you can play Alistair and make a Macabre with one card in order to be able to block that out because you need your normal summon. Um, so it is really tough to be able to effectively assemble that board. But let's let's see here, assuming your opponent... We're going to assume the opponent has... Um, we're going to assume the opponent has an Ash Blossom in hand. So we're playing against an opponent who's got an Ash, so we know they have at least one negate. Let's see how our, um, you know, sort of plays are going to go. Now, this is tough, right? Because you, you always want to be mindful of the possibility of an Ash Blossom, first of all. So it's like, do I normal summon the Dark Beckoning Beast first, activate the effect to search, and then they negate? Or do I play the spell first to bait it out? Realistically speaking, it doesn't matter a ton. But we're going to go... I, I always think that it's best to start off with the monster. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to normal summon Dark Beckoning Beast. We're going to activate Effect to Search. Let's say the opponent Ash Blossoms that, so the effect does not resolve. Right now, you're in a little bit of a, a you know a tough spot because you're down a card already. But you have the opening of the Spirit Gates. Now, obviously, they can't Ash you twice in a turn. So if they stop your opening play, you play the opening of the Spirit Gates, which uh, you, know, you might have searched off of that anyway. Um, but that's, you know neither here nor there at the moment now you got a couple of choices here i'm gonna go ahead and search chaos summoning beast here um now you already you know you don't you're already ash so you're okay on that you still get the extra normal summon it doesn't negate any of that so i have these two here i can tribute this off right away to special summon Haman. Haman's here i got the sky fire which is cool so i'll activate the sky fire that way if they try to imperm um, at this point, nothing that they would have impermanence is going to impact you. So now you have a hard negate for it. You go Chaos Summoning Beast from Grave. Obviously, to get the Fallen Paradise, um, which is just super, super important. And I don't even know. I mean, it depends on the draws there whether or not you'd be able to uh, actually get to the Raviel as well. So you activate the Fallen Paradise. Two cards in hand. You're going to draw two off of Fallen Paradise. Ah, not the best. Um, you still have the Desires, though. So... I'm going to take a gamble on it because at that point, I mean, you don't really have too much of a choice. You go one, two, three, four, five, 
10. Draw two. And let's see what we got. If we didn't banish... Okay, we did not banish both of our Raviel's hard, so that's good. We did banish the hand trap guy, but that's okay. So right now we have the Haman who's untargetable, and we have a negate. It's really not that impressive of a board, all things considered. With the two um, cards we drew, we got well, it definitely improves it a little. So we got deck lockdown, which you know we'll activate here at this point. So I don't inherently love this. Um, this board, but it's not the worst I've ever seen. I don't want to leave the Beckoning Beast there, because that, that does a whole lot of nothing. So we're going to link him away for Almirage. Uh, ultimately, I guess, if they do get your Fallen Paradise off the board, at least you can protect him on for a turn. And you're going into it with one Effect Veiler. So you have, you know, one Disruption here, another Disruption in hand, Untargetable, and then you also have the Locking Down of, you know, Searching, so they can't necessarily get outs to your stuff. It's a pretty cool combo. Um, it's definitely one of those things that, like, I wish more like really skilled players would sort of mess around with because i think if somebody could find like breakthrough ways to make the deck more not consistent because you have ways to get pretty much everything you need it's just no matter whether you're using extravagance or you're using desires you're gonna be in a setback because extravagance is going to shut off your fallen paradise which means you're not going to have the ability to plus what technically amounts to plusing two um and resetting your hand but i don't know so either way if you don't have an opponent who just opens the nuts and has a million negates you can typically play through the one in perm it just depends on how your hand is set up so that's pretty much it for the combos i'm only gonna do a couple um i just want to do a few test and sort of show you guys how i would play versus hand traps and not but let's talk about a few of the alternatives uh that we can play in the deck if you want to go for even more of a competitive vibe than what i'm trying to do all right, so as far as alternatives go, there's a couple different things you can play in the deck that I'm not currently playing. So one of them is Forbidden Droplets. I do not have a place that right now. It just came out last week, uh, Rise of the Duelist, so I don't have any right now. It's an insanely good card. It does sort of help you, but even then, opening with Forbidden Droplets in a deck that goes first, I it's got its ups and downs, so I still tend to be more partial to Called by the Grave, and I would probably look to that as a side card. Triple Tactics Talent is another one that I'm not hugely fond of as a card, but, like, you could definitely argue that if they Ash Blossom against this deck and then you get the draw two, that's insane because it's extra plusing you don't have to worry about and you're more likely to get to your combo. I don't... I don't recommend it necessarily, but it is definitely an alternative. Another one is Ash. Um, you could obviously play Ash Blossom over Effect Failure. They're kind of interchangeable. I think either one is okay if i was playing in permanence in the deck i'd probably elect to play ash as well which would mean i need to shuffle around six cards you could take out the upstart cyclone maybe you could even take out the foolish burial it'd take a little bit of maneuvering to get it to work but so those three uh sort of cards forbidden droplets i do like i once i get them would like to play test with them a little bit more to see whether or not i feel they'd be effective talents i think is a little overrated as a card but this deck is really susceptible to ash and not going to get hit by Nibiru all that often, so you don't have to worry about it too much. If you do get Ash, you can play through it. And then, of course, lastly, you know, like I said, uh, Ash Blossom itself is really good. It's just I would go Ash Impermanence combo if I was going to play those versus just playing the Effect Failures. So that's pretty much the alternatives. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. A little bit of a different approach to, like, the way I've done deck profiles in the past trying to be more in depth about it this is a deck i've played around with a lot and really enjoy playing so if you enjoy the formatting definitely let me know if there's other things you want to see uh, deck profiles done for i am working on gaia i came up a bit short on a few cards i was trying to get to put that together i got fluffles coming up like i promised so plenty of stuff on the horizon i really appreciate the support definitely drop a like down below if you did enjoy the video and our next opening video which will probably be over the weekend like i said will feature the next giveaway again congrats to pietra zekin who won this giveaway I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.